हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास अब्बा जी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट ऑफ स्टेट कॉलेज सिरा अफिलेटेड टू तुमकूर यूनिवर्सिटी कर्नाटक इन द प्रेजेंट वीडियो शिशन आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू द पोइट बाय नेम रॉबर्ट फ्रास्ट रॉबर्ट फ्रास्ट the english poet whom you are going to study in the present session of the class and uh, with him uh, you are going to study in particular is uh, the most popular poem mending wall mending wall is a poem written by robert frost that you are going to study in detail for the paper 7th of tumkur university frost is a popular name uh in the history of english literature particularly in the history of uh, english poetry you might have heard his name somewhere robert frost such a wonderful influencing poet of all the time uh now it is a, a it is an opportunity for us to uh meet him meet the robert frost uh, in his poem the mending wall and try to understand what frost has put forward uh in his poem the mending wall now let us see Uh, something about uh, robert frost uh thank you now uh, listen to me uh i give some that is uh, information regarding uh, robert frost for you how important it is that you can understand after listening to me robert frost uh, was a classical poet of america He was an American poet. The best, the point you keep remember, the poet belongs to America. The point number one that you should keep remember. And uh, he was a poet of wisdom. You know the word wisdom. you know the wisdom is a word related to the uh word knowledge and it is related to wit wit and wisdom we use them in a compound phrase wit and wisdom knowledge these uh, three words belongs to same family of words at the terms we see that uh frost was a poet of wisdom he was uh, a intellectual uh, poet 
and uh, it was a part of uh, enlightenment and part of delight frost was a part of wisdom and part of intellectual enlightenment and uh, delight the part of delight he was a lover of nature he loved nature the most not like wordsworth but he uh, is looking at nature is entirely different from the wordsworth let us see all these things in the in this poem he wrote for humanity there was a a purpose behind uh, writing uh, his poetry he wrote for humanity for human community in the world he used a simple subject for his poetry yet they are thoughtful right in this uh, slide uh, you have seen uh, something about uh, robert frost he was a poet of america poet of wisdom the poet of intellectual enlightenment and delight lover of nature poet who wrote for humanity he has taken a simple subject a common subjects to his poetry but the subjects could become thoughtful at the end of the poem which is the speciality of robert frost so robert frost uh, he uh, interprets poetry are uh, according to robert frost poetry means what poetry is according to robert frost poetry our poetry should be should begins with the delight and the ends with the wisdom this is the the principle of robert frost while writing his poetry any of his poems they begin with the delight and the end with a wisdom that means uh, he gives a uh, pleasure a kind of happiness to the mind his purpose of his poetry the purpose of his poetry is to give a uh, delight or happiness to the mind relax to the mind with his vivid description of nature and context and finally he wanted to give a message with the wisdom therefore his uh, poetic theory is like this it is the principle of his poetry uh, this is uh, what the brief information about uh, robert frost that you are uh, getting in the uh, slide 1 right uh, i told you uh, robert frost uh, uh, he was a poet who influenced a lot in the world frost has influenced a poet he influenced many as a writer as a poet of america a classical poet of america he impacted on many minds of the world not only the the people of the america but around the world many people were and many writers and many readers uh, many personalities were in, who influenced greatly influenced are immensely influenced by his uh, poetry and his words in the poetry such a great poet uh, uh, robert frost was every poem has uh, a wisdomized message at the end of the poem i told you wisdomized message message is converted into wisdomize he is a master of using compound metaphors with simple words he was a poet of high imagination and and vivid description he influenced and inspired many uh, across the world nehru that is pandit jawahar nehru our first prime minister of india and a freedom fighter our nehru ji 
he was greatly influenced by his poem and the most influenced lines of the poem that i tell you stopping by the woods by snowy evening stopping by the woods by snowy evening is an important poem that influenced nehru a lot let me quote the concluding uh, words of the poem stopping by the woods by snowy evening uh, they influenced and our nehru and nehru made india modern by the inspiration of these words the message wisdom is a message of the these words now let me quote miles and miles to go before i sleep miles and miles to go before i sleep these two lines are concluding lines of the poem stopping by the woods Uh, same lines repeated miles and miles to go before i sleep miles and miles to go before i sleep such a wonderful simple uh, words therefore with the simple words he give the uh, a thoughtful message a wisdomized message to the people of the world that is a special quality of robert frost that we can see let us see uh, how uh, uh, his poems influenced uh, the people across the world and uh, what were his contributions to the literature and uh, what are his influenced poems uh, he wrote very big number of poems i listed few here those influenced many people around the world number 1 so simple and shortest poem uh, influenced a lot to the people of the world young people were mostly influenced by this poem that is uh, the road not taken the road not taken see the simple concept and subject is road there is no concrete in it very simple common word subject birches second important poem stopping by the woods in the snowy evening departmental mending wall the gift outright home burial fire and ice there were many i read out once again to keep them in your mind the road not taken birches stopping by the woods by snow evening department mending wall the gift outright home burial fire and the ice Uh, these are the most influenced poems were written by robert frost of them you are going to study the one that is mending wall where you can see how powerful uh, robert frost is and how he is going to influence you when you read and understand the whole poem in detail you can uh, observe and uh, you can make an experiment while reading in the light of uh, um, these uh, the features that i told you are the principles that uh, robert pratt has adopted while writing his poetry uh, right uh, let us see uh, in this slide uh, uh, introduction to the poem robert frost now we have we got uh, some information about introduction about robert frost Who was robert frost what kind of poetry he wrote and how many poems he wrote what what is the influence in the poems and who were influenced uh, what he mainly focused in poetry this is what we have seen in the uh, last three slides that is about uh, robert frost a brief uh, note on him and now in this slide we see uh, let us see try to understand uh, the background of mending wall what is mending wall how the poet is going to introduce 
to poem mandarin wall to you for the readers i just uh, get uh, some gist about uh, uh, mending wall now mending wall was published in 1914 keep remember the date that when it was published it was published in year 1914 the poem mending wall uh, uh, revolves around the story of two neighbors mending wall is a poem that revolves around the story of two neighbors though it is a very big poem in the poem we see the story of two neighbors the two people two men the whole entire story which is narrated and descripted throughout the poem is around two neighbors the two people two men uh, that is uh, very much clear that in the whole poem we see the and we meet and understand uh, the story of two people two men two neighbors better keep the word neighbors who come across each other in the spring season in the spring season uh they used to meet every year the neighbors to mend the stone wall that separates their farms now you may uh, understand and you may observe you may uh, guess you may imagine that neighbors were farmers they have their farms they meet at the farms remember neighbors were neighbors neighbors for farms they have the lands and they meet uh, at the farm at their farms when do they meet they used to meet every in a very spring season in a year and uh, when they meet what usually they do they uh, used to mend a stone wall to separate their farms their lands between their lands they put a boundary by building a stone wall between two farms of their own uh, this is what we see throughout the poem i uh, uh, say once again that uh, it is the story narrated by the the poet in the poem it is the story of two neighbors two neighbors were two farmers they have their land they used to meet Uh, in every year during uh, the spring season they used to meet in order to mend a stone wall why do they mend the stone wall they mend the stone wall in order to separate their farms they wanted to put a boundary put a landmark put a wall they build a wall to separate to segregate their farms uh, with this purpose they used to meet in every uh, spring season without miss just to build a stone wall between their farms now you can understand uh, what the poem has going to deal with the poem also demonstrate how good fences create good neighbors and how people can preserve their long standing relations with neighbors by finding such walls this is the second point you have to observe the poem demonstrate demonstrates 
how good fences make good neighbors and how people can preserve their long standing relations with neighbors by finding such walls it means walls are necessary uh, walls are must to keep the uh, relationship of the two neighbors well and also preserve their land without any the problem they preserve they not only preserve their land but also they preserve their land standing relationship and these two points we observe uh, in the whole poem this is the a brief note uh, uh on the poem that is a mending wall right let us see now mending wall uh, is a masterpiece of robert frost he wrote uh, many poems of them it has become a masterpiece of robert frost why it has become so masterpiece and what he has put in this world uh, let us see uh, uh, when we uh, see the poem in detail in the another discussion uh, the poem looks at how literary masterpiece uses the mending of wall between the two farms as a metaphor for healthy boundaries in society see that mending wall the poem has become masterpiece because of using uh, a metaphor mending wall is a compound uh, metaphor is a compound word which is which is used as a central metaphor in the poem the very title of the poem itself has become a metaphor central metaphor of the poem because of that the poem has become masterpiece of robert frost very simple uh, words i told you already he gives a immense message a wonderful message a wisdom nature message to the people of the world that we can easily understand in simple words the concrete uh, 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 that is thoughts could become quite simple uh, in his words particularly in his poetry the very title of the poem mending wall it is central metaphor keep in remember it is a metaphor it is central metaphor around this there we can see other uh, figure of speech is there poet has used in the poem here mending means building a wall as a boundary to the farms mending means here building what they do build they build a wall what kind of wall it is it is a stone wall where do they build it they build it between their farms why do they build they build in order to uh, get the boundary between it and uh, to preserve with great safety without any the problems between or conflict between the quarrel between the two neighbors wall refers to gap let us see what is wall the simple word wall we see hundreds of wall it is very familiar word wall refers to gap the purpose of the wall is to create gap a kind of distance it is a kind of break there is a difference you see that wall create all these things it refers to gap distance break and difference it is usually built with uh, either bricks or stones usually uh, anywhere we see the the wall that is created by either bricks or stones it come uh, the uh, uh, materials that we use uh, to build the wall is commonly bricks and stones stone wall or the brick walls we see that they create a gap distance break and differences 
it is used to create boundary between two things physically they create only physical uh, gaps or distances the physical gap or the distances it is created after the gap which is already generated in one's mind the physical gap it is seen and observed by every one of us by building a stone wall between the two farms before building a stone wall there should be a wall which is already created the emotionally created mentally created psychologically created in one's mind wall is already created in the mind itself that idea of wall which is uh, uh, built physically between the two forms it is used to create boundary between the two things physically the idea of gap or distance is symbolized by wall why the idea of wall is created in the mind of man the man himself uh, is held responsible for creating all these things let us see how the idea of wall comes to one's mind and how does it work in the in the mind of the people differences in man makes him to build a wall when the man uh, uh, he thinks he is uh, friendly and there will be a kind of affectionate and good relationships good opinions good emotions good atmosphere Uh, we never expect a kind of wall, idea of wall. But when there is a difference, a solid in the mind, uh, naturally uh, we build a wall uh, physically. Differences in man make uh, him to build a wall. When there is no faith between and among his fellow beings, the gap is naturally developed and it is promoted with an idea of wall. It is quite common even. uh in us also we are not uh, uh, that is uh, free from this we are white well when there is no faith the faithless people the faithless neighbors can only uh, demanding themselves they promising themselves to create a wall between the bow between the the lands or the farms the fundamental question of the speaker is here the uh, we uh, i told you at the outset of the poem that is uh, there are two neighbors around them the poem is uh, revolves and develop a narrative story of them here one is the speaker another is the neighbor the speaker himself uh, could be the poet and therefore he asks a question fundamental question to the po- the poet is wall necessary between the two forms very simple and logical question of the poet or the speaker is that is wall must or necessary or needful between the two forms he asking himself and he asked the same question to the his neighbor because there are only speakers uh, there are only speakers appeal apple sorry apple orchard in his farm and pine trees in his neighbor's farm we see here the two neighbors one is the speaker another is the neighbor that is a poet and other other man they were neighbors the poet has apple orchard in his farm and his neighbor he has a pine trees in his in his farm in the two farms we see the two kind of crops that is one is the banana another is the apple having this in mind or with this background the poet is asking that why apple trees uh, need or apple orchard need a wall why a pine trees uh, need uh, a wall between them do they get across each other do they quarrel each other do they find a kind of differences 
This is the, the question, the simple question of the poet. If there is no harm per, uh, from each uh, crops, apple and the pine, why do we are uh, why do we build a wall, a stone wall between the the crops? If there if there is any uh, that is a difference, a kind of uh, that is a uh, harmfulness between the two crops, then it would quite uh, a kind of infection uh, today we used to say that. Then we can create it. It is quite uh, uh, inevitable for us to build a wall to keep the distance. As we keep the difference today to keeping away from the coronavirus. Right. The poet thinks uh, that uh, the crops never get across each other in the farms. Only the owner of the farm can get across. Or, or uh, there shall be some uh, the cows and other animals uh, they used to get into the farm and they can uh, harm and they can eat and uh, they can disturb the, uh, the crops. That is possible. But the poet is rightly thinking that uh, the crops never get across, the crops never speak and they never quarrel each other. They are healthy uh, on the land. Uh, they uh, need not uh, any kind of uh, stone wall between them. But why a neighbor is uh, forcing and repeatedly telling that walls are essential, they, are, they need. They are hardly, uh, there are hardly cows to spoil the crops in the farms. Even there, uh, there is no possibility of cows to come to that far of lands to disturb or eat or uh, that is destroy the crops. So there is a, a need of wall between the farms. There is no need. But this neighbor is uh, forcing him to build a wall every year. But his neighbor uh, argues and uh, defends that his neighbor is always uh, arguing. There is a long debate uh, and discussion and argument between the, the poet and the speaker and the neighbor. Uh, uh, regarding building the wall. He used to say that he is uh, quoting uh, the word, the quotation, the proverb that good fences make good neighbors and keep good relations. This is the permanent and constant only the statement uh, the poet's neighbor is uh, putting forward in his argument. With this he is going to justify uh, that uh, good fences make good neighbors. Let us see the uh, the conflict between the poet and the neighbor. What conflict is arising? One uh, doesn't want a wall. One must have the wall. One has positive attitude, another is negative attitude. One is uh, admitting that walls are not necessary. There is no harm to each crops in, in different forms. One is demanding constantly and is commanding uh, to have the stone wall. So they used to meet every year in the spring season. Right, the poem begins uh, uh, with a simple uh, line like this something there is that doesn't love war Robert Frost see that how wonderful words he has put forward uh, and with this uh, and the poem begins something there is uh, that doesn't love war this poetic line this poetry Uh, the same thing can be uh, uh, put in a prose, poetry and a prose. See the prose now. Something there is that doesn't love wall is a poetry, is a poetic line, poetic diction. And the same thing uh, uh, 
he is in the pros there is something that does not love a wall a simple i made it uh, quite simple for you to understand this can be uh, uh, changed like this there is something that does not love wall in other words there is something that does not like wall Uh, the poet is uh, that is uh, is putting his statement the argument and he tries to convince uh, his neighbor with this statement the poet asks uh, what doesn't like wall actually there is no need of wall agandu poet but when his neighbor is uh, demanding uh, he is thinking that the poet asks uh, what does not like wall something in the neighbor's mind that likes wall something in poet's mind does not like wall but here the statement is that there is something uh, that does not uh, love wall where is something a uh, something uh, where the something is that does not love wall he also asks why wall straight away ask why wall is why wall is must for us where is wall where the idea is wall all is in the person that in the mind of the poet what is wall what is referred and implied in the wall finally he is asking the series of questions to admit his views and to make convince uh, is a fellow being that is never thus there are series of questions around wall that create conflict in poet and his neighbor there is a uh, a conflict in the mind of the poet and in the mind of his neighbor that is about wall one wants wall one doesn't want wall Uh, this is the uh, the argument if this uh, on the wall uh, the two arguments are developed throughout the poem we see the justifications of the poet and justifications of the his neighbor in the whole poem uh, in the next session we shall see how the justification made by the poet uh, to defend himself for not having wall and how neighbor is uh, going to put forward and uh, he, he uh, uh, used his statement uh, good friends make good neighbors and keep good relations uh, this is the step with this statement he is going to argue that argument is continued uh, in the later part of the poem that we see in the next uh, class uh, thank you for having uh, uh, understanding and listening my words uh, on the rubber plot and his poem mending wall Thank you so much.